Hi there and welcome to another video on software development. The topic of this video is peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of peer-to-peer -peer networks, you've heard of um, systems like CASA and Napster and Nutella and um, BitTorrent, Skype, Hamachi or LockMeIn and systems that are similar to that. And these are all systems where thousands and, and even uh, millions of peers, computers, peers are communicating with each other without a central server. Some of them have a central server, but and some of them have none. And the topic of this video is how do you get these millions or thousands of millions of peers to communicate with each other, to cooperate and to provide a, a service to each other without having a central server. First, if you imagine that you have um, several thousand computers um, all connected to the internet and these computers want to cooperate and communicate with each other then if they do not know each other and there's no central server that they can com communicate through then they need some kind of mechanism that allows them to find each other so the first step is as shown in this diagram is the disorganized network and from that we need to get to step two which is assigning a quit to all of the peers in the second diagram you can see that all of the peers have been assigned um, a quit which is a short for globally unique ID and um, this quit is what the what the peers will identify each other by and distinguish each other from each other using in other words if uh, peer 1 needs to communicate with peer 4 then using this globally unique ID peer 1 can make certain make sure that it is actually communicating with the peer 4 and not peer 17 or peer 9 or whatever so the GUIDs are uniquely identifying each peer in the network so they can be distinguished from each other. After assigning a GUID to every single peer in the network, the peers are um, organized into a virtual ring and the peers are organized or ordered in the ring according to their GUID. So as you can see on this, uh, on this diagram, at the top we have peer 1, then peer 2, then peer 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. And um, this organization is purely virtual, logical. Um, it does not mean that peer 1 is close to peer 2 geographically. It's just a virtual, logical way of organizing the peers into a network. On this diagram you can see again a peer ring. Um, and it shows 16 peers organized into a ring. None of these peers yet have any, um, have any connection to, to one another. They're just logically, virtually, logically ordered into this ring. Once the peers are organized into this ring, then somehow each peer needs to have a set of references to other peers in the network so that it is able to communicate with them. But I mean, if you, um, if you imagine a network, a peer-to-peer -peer network with millions of peers, it is not possible to, for each peer to have a reference to every single other peer in the network. Therefore, each peer needs to have uh, a reference to a subset of the, the rest of the peers in the network. Thus, if there are a million peers in the network, then each peer might only have references to say maybe 10 or 20 other peers in the network and via these net these references it is capable of finding every single peer in the network but only hold references to just a few and so how do we do that which which peers do we choose um, we do that based on a distance from a peers own GUID. So if peer zero is um, is to reference 
a set of nodes in the network, then it will then it will choose which peers to to reference based on peer zero's own GUID, which is zero. And rather than just have say ten or fifteen or whatever randomly chosen other peers in the network to reference, peer peer zero will choose to reference peers that are exponentially further and further away from itself in the ring. As you can see in this diagram, then peer zero has a reference to peer one and there's a distance of one between them. Peer zero has a reference to peer two. There's a, a distance of two, a width distance of two between them. Peer zero has a reference to peer four. There's a width distance of four between the two peers and then it has a reference to peer 8 which is a grid distance of 8 and as you can see uh, that results in a distance between the, the referencing peer which is peer 0 and the referenced peers 1, 2, 4 and 8 which increases exponentially it actually it doubles every time and that is how a peer chooses which um, other peers in the network to reference. If, for instance, peer, peer 4 was not actually in the network, a part of the network at the time, then peer 0 would choose the closest peer to peer 4 as that it could get. And uh, here is another diagram showing both peer zero's uh, references, or ruling table as it is always also called, and uh, peer 9's similar routing table. As you can see, peer 9 has a reference to peer 10, peer 11, peer 13, and peer 1. As you can see, the ring wraps around 0, the grid space wraps around 0, meaning that the distance from 9 to 1 is, is um, wraps around Zero meaning that after 15 then zero is the next, is, is considered the next biggest number and then one biggest number etc etc. Uh, in this diagram you can see that, or I have shown you uh, Court's way of uh, calculating distances. There are several different peer-to-peer -peer network algorithms or systems out there and um, in, this, in this video I will only be diving into the one called Cort and Kademlia and mostly Kademlia. Kademlia is actually based on Cort with a minor difference in the way they calculate the distance between two, two peers in the network. And in this diagram I have shown you um, Cort's distance calculation which, which is defined like this. The distance between A and B is equal to b minus a plus 2 to the nth uh, modulo 2 to the nth. Basically that means the uh, plus 2 to the nth modulo 2 to the nth is what makes the grid space wrap around 0. Um, now Kademlia calculates the distance is a little bit different. It just takes the distance of the grid of x of a and the grid of b and then it XORs the two grids together and whatever comes out of that is considered the distance. The advantage of doing that is that the distance between a and b is the same as the distance between b and a and that is not the case with um, with court with the way court calculates its distance. For instance if you look at the diagram before, uh, here, you will see that the distance from 7 to 8 is not the same as the distance from 8 to 7. Because the distance from 8 to 7 would have to wrap all the way around the circle. From over 15 to 0 and all the way back to 7, which means that is a distance of 15. Whereas the distance from 7 to 8 is a distance of only 1. If you XOR 7 and 8 together, you will get the same distance whether you, you, whether you calculate it as A, X or B, or B, X or A. So this is a, uh, 
This is an advantage that makes Cademia's distance a little bit easier to, to calculate. Here are another two diagrams, or the first diagram here of a peer-to-peer -peer network. And in this diagram you can see this is a court network. Uh, so the distances are calculated using court's um, distance function. And you can see peer zero's references, you can see peer one's references, you can see peer two's references, and you can see peer three's references. Now on this diagram, on the next diagram, the second diagram here, you can see the same network but using academia distance function instead, the XOR distance function. And as you can see, I have removed the arrows on the reference direction because when you use XOR as distance function, then as you remember, 0 XOR 8 results in the same distance as 8 XOR 0. And that means that for every peer that 0 has in its routing table, you know, as you can see, peer 0 has 1, 2, 4, and 8 in its routing table. That means that these peers will also have peer 0 in their routing tables, meaning that 1 will have 0 in its routing table, 2 will have 0 in its routing table, 4 will have 0 in its routing table, and peer 8 will have 0 in its routing table. But anyways, as you can see, the whole network, you can probably imagine that all the peers in, in the network will have references to other peers in the network like this. And they will have lock in um, references to other peers in the network. So, for instance, if the GUID space, let's say that the GUID space, the GUIDs are 64 bits long. That means you can have 2 to the 64th power um, of peers in the network, different peers in the network. And that means that every peer, in order for all peers to be able to find each other, every peer needs a routing table that contains 2, a lock, 2 to the nth um, peers in it. And in this case, n was 64. You know, it was a 64-bit with and that means that each peer needs a routing table of 64 other peers in uh, in order to be able to communicate with uh, with all the peers in the network and as you can see if all the peers have routing have um, routing tables that contain references to to peers that are exponentially further and further away from its own grid then Throughout the network, the network will be fully covered and interleaved, and it will be possible to find peers in the network, and I, I will show that in just a second, or in, in the next diagram. This is a diagram showing peer 0 searching for peer 8, no, uh, peer 0 searching for peer 15. What you can see is that peer 0 first contacts peer 8, it looks in its own routing table for the closest uh, grid it has to to 15, and that uh, is peer 8, and then it contacts peer 8 and asks peer 8 which which grid do you have in your routing table which is closer to um, to peer 15 than yourself, and peer 8 responds, well I, I know peer 12, and then it returns peer 12 to peer 0. Peer 0 then contacts peer 12 and asks uh, for the closest peer that peer 12 knows, uh, to peer 15 and peer 15. Peer 12 returns peer 14 and then again peer 0 contacts peer 14 and asks for the closest peer to peer 15 and since peer 14 is very close in the grid space to peer 15 it actually has a reference directly to it and it returns that reference to peer 0 and peer 0 has now found it has now located peer 15 and it is now able to contact it directly and communicate with it and when you look at this, this diagram here, you can probably see what it is that is happening. Um, because of the exponential distance organization of, uh, or distribution of the references in, in each peer's routing table, as you can see, the distance between the peer searching for, um, for another peer and the peer that it is searching for, the target peer, is cut in half for every uh, step it takes.
as you can see the distance between 0 and 15 is 15 and in the first step, the first search step it cuts half that distance because the closest peer it already knows a peer that is about half the distance away from peer 15 and then it asks that and since peer 8 is closer in the grid space to peer 15 than peer 0 then it knows a peer that is only halfway again from 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 itself from peer 8 to peer 15 it knows peer 12 which is about halfway between peer 8 and peer 15 and again peer 8 peer 12 knows a peer that is about halfway between itself and peer 15 and again peer 14 when you cut that distance in half it actually results in a, in a distance of 1 so peer 14 actually knows um, has a reference directly to peer 15 as you can see the, the, the distance is first uh, cut from 15 to 7, then from 7 to 4, and then from 4 to 1, and then from 1 to 0. So that is like a logarithmic um, decline in, in the distance between the searching peer and the peer that it is searching for. And as you can see, that results in, for instance, if the grid space is 64 bits, that means that every peer must have at least uh, must have 64 other peers in its routing table and that means that using this search algorithm, this find algorithm then every peer can find every other peer in the network in at most 64 search steps and that's pretty good if you consider how many peers that are actually capable of being being part of such a network with the 2 to the 64th um, different peers, that's, that's a lot of peers and, and being able to find every single peer in that network in only 64 steps, that's a pretty good search um, that's a pretty good search speed and, that's, and it scales pretty well. If you imagine doubling the number of peers from, for instance in this case it is only 16, 16 peers which is 2 to the 4th which you know means that each peer needs four references. Imagine you double the number of peers to 32, then each peer will only need one extra peer in its routing table. Now it needs two to the five, or now there's space for two to the to the fifth power, which is 32 peers in the network, and that means every peer needs five references rather than instead of four. And again, if you double to 64 nodes, then it is six peers each table that each peer needs in its routing table. And if you double again to 128, then each peer needs seven, and so on and so forth. And that's a pretty good scalability of uh, on the find algorithm. So uh, you might be wondering how how do you get all these peers to actually know each other in the first place? Because if you if you look if you remember the uh, the first diagram I show you, then the, the, the network was completely disorganized and none of the peers knew each other so how do you get them to know each other and what you do or what you need is you need a boot peer there has to be a first peer in the network and this network this peer has to be the boot peer has to be known to at least the first peer entering the network and as you can see here the, the first peer the joining peer contacts the boot peer and asks to join the network and then the boot peer responds with a GUID uh, in some networks the joining peer might decide its own GUID but um, I prefer that the boot peer decides which GUIDs to add to assign to joining peers now the network consists of two peers so the second thing that the joining peer does is to ask the boot peer for a couple of its routing table now if if the network is completely empty meaning it only contains the boot peer and the joining peer then that routing table is going to be totally empty it's only it's not going to contain any new peers but let's say that this network had been running for a while and that for instance there were like I don't know 7, 8, 10, 15 other peers in that network then the boot peer would send a copy of its routing table back to the joining peer and the joining peer could use this routing table to build its own joining, uh, its own routing table and it, would, it does so by calculating first it 
First it calculates which peers it should ideally have in its routing table. I mean, if, if it could choose freely, which grids would it have in, in the routing table? And it, it calculates that based on the exponential distance from its own grid. Then it uses the, uh, the temporary routing table that it has received from the boot peer and uses that to search for these ideal peers in the network. And it will put into its own routing table the closest peers in the network that it finds to these ideal peers. And that is how the joining peer gets its own routing table finished or completed. At some point, a peer wants to, uh, to leave the peer-to-peer -peer network again. And the peers that are left in the network now needs to remove the leaving peer from their routing tables. Therefore, to be a good citizen in the in the peer-to-peer -peer network, the leaving peer will send a message to every single peer that it has in its own routing table. If you're using academia, academia distance function, then as you might remember, then every peer that, for instance, peer zero has in its routing table will also have peer zero in its own routing table. So it's very easy to figure out which peers need to remove peer zero from its routing table because that is all the peers in peer zero's own routing table. So when peer zero wants to leave the network, it contacts peer one, peer two, peer four, and peer eight, or the closest peers it has in its routing table to these peers, and sends them a leave message. And after that is done, peer zero can then shut down and leave the network, and peer one, two, four and eight can remove peer zero from its, its routing table and start searching for um, the second closest peer that it can find to peer zero and put that into the routing table instead. From time to time uh, a peer may leave a peer-to-peer -peer network because it crashes or it may fail to send all the leave messages before the computer is shut down or something like that. And in that case, the peers left in the network still need some kind of mechanism that detects that a peer has left the network that is not, not anymore available. And then to remove that peer from the routing table. And this is called uh, routing table management. And what, what each peer does is, in order to manage its routing table, to keep it up to date, it's quite simply to periodically search for the ideal peers that it should have in its routing table and the closest peer it finds it will insert into the routing table and if one of the peers that it has in its routing table for, um, does not respond or that it's not possible to connect to it then the peer can remove that peer from its routing table so in this case for instance peer zero has peer 1, 2, 4, and 8 in its routing table, then peer 4 crashes. And when peer 0 gets around to doing its routing table management, it will contact peer 1, peer 2, and there will be no problem, so they will be kept in the routing table. Then peer 0 contacts peer 4, but there's no response. Peer 4 has crashed, and therefore peer 0 can, can remove peer 4 from the network, and it can start searching for a new peer to put into its routing table, for instance, peer 5 or 6 or 7. And it will continue to contact peer 8 and peer 8 is still running, so it keeps that in, in the network. And the join and the leave message and this routing table, message, routing table management should be sufficient to keep the routing tables of each peer up to date. So, to uh, sum up the peer-to-peer -peer network technology, or this video on peer-to-peer -peer network technology, there are four different messages that each peer has to be able to send and receive from other peers. There's a, there's a join message, um, which should result in the joining peer getting a quit. There's a leave message, which should result in the peers contacted removing the leaving peer from their, from their routing tables. There's the copy booting table, which is also sent by the joining peer to have a, a booting table to start out with, even though it's not perfect, it's better than nothing. And then there's the find closest message, which is used when a peer is searching for 
uh, another peer in the network. And these four messages are actually enough to, to get a functioning peer-to-peer -peer network to 